Thank you, Corporal. Mom. Oh, good God alive. Good God. I never expected to see this again. Thirteen and three-quarter ounces of a crystalline substance that has resisted every attempt at identification. Impervious to acid, completely resistant to a diamond tip drill. Why did Professor Gibbon shut it away? What on earth is it, Wells? That's not quite the right question, Ellen. Wasn't always black like this, of course. Not by any means. It was rather beautiful in its way. Miss Robbins, upon my soul. You see, you're surprised to see me, Professor Given. I do work here. Of course you do, of course you do. The specimen, Professor. Oh, him? No, no, no. Needed a new doorstop. Oh, well, Mr. Oh, sorry, me. I really am. Uh, which way is the vivarium? I'm late already. Oh, Cave. W William Cave. Naturalist. I'll show you, Mr. Cave. Good idea. So you're a scientist, Mr. Cave? Student of nature. <laughs> Well, this is just one of my business interests. This way, Mr. Cave. Thank you. This is the place, Mr. Cave. Hello, Billy. Hello, Miss. Hello, Mr. Cave. You got them frogs then? Yeah. Good. A shilling, as agreed. 
Oh my good gracious. I'm late. She'll have my guts regardless. I refer to Mrs. K, my lady wife. God bless her. In your debt, if there's anything you need, William Cave. Thank you, Billy. I've come to recognize your tread. Such a strange sort of man. Just a few streets away. How are your classes? What did you teach? Elementary anatomy. Not elementary enough for some of the class, needless to say. Basic biology ditto. Your day? Not so bad. Not so good either. Will you stay for supper? I'll walk you home. You've actually got food in? Oh, yes. Yeah. What's the choice? Well, there's uh, sausages. Or? Sausages. That certainly simplifies things no end. Come and get your ass. Come on. My intuition, madam. I'm looking for Mr. Cave. The name's Skinner. Well, he's late, isn't he? Late for his own funeral, that one. I talked to him about... Yes? Mr. Cave and I, we made a negotiation. You did? I said I'd bring a certain item into the shop today. Well, let's be having you, then. A unique item, this. Mr. Cave and I, we made an agreement. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> Crystal Hegg, make a nice paperweight. More than a paperweight. We settled on 30 shillings, Mr Cave and I. <laughs> no sense talking to Mr Cave about money. Go to Mrs Cave if you want to talk money. Mrs Cave? Good evening. 20 shillings. But that's not what we agreed. This could be rare, this. A jewel. Never seen anything like it. Experienced in jewels, are you? 20 shillings for a paperweight. Generous, I'd call that. Nicely finished, though. No arguments there. How about this? Call it 21 shillings. The full guinea. And just what have you been doing with yourself? Late again? It's been hectic here, just hectic. I had to take a rest. Sorry, Rosa, I got held up. Oh. Must have taken leave of your senses, you. 30 shillings. I took it off him for a guinea. Reckon I can get four or five pounds for that. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Not as beautiful as five pounds. Mm.
you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye, Bye. Bye. Back to work, then. Don't chain yourself to your desk, Wells. Get out of it. Walk the streets. It'll spark up some ideas. I will, I promise. You seem not quite yourself. What is it? My Thursday afternoon class, remember? Stiff upper lip. You too, Wells. Nerves are grating just to watch her. Did you hear what I said? Back you go now and count up the takings. I need the. I have business to transact with Mr. Wace. Jacoby. Rosa. Good morning. Cultured. Paste. Glass. There's really nothing here I can help you with, my dear Rosa. Hmm? Another time. Hmm? Wait a minute, Jacoby. My God. Uh, paperweight? Hardly that. Yeah. I must admit, I've never quite seen anything like this before. Carry on, Cave. <laughs> yeah. For a moment, I thought I saw something moving inside. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the frog. Now, this afternoon, I'd like us to put into practice some of the basic principles of dissection we talked about last week. And now... Why don't you show us the way? Neck to groin, if you please. Well, it's not quartz. It's not rock crystal. Not lead glass. And not... Tourmaline, that's for sure. What are you, then? Could it be a real gem? A diamond, even? <sighs> I know diamonds. The colours in this, they're not the same. Not the same fire. Yes, I don't know these colours. Rosa. Hmm. If I had the tiniest sample, with your permission, I could look at it through a microscope. You won't damage it. The merest shaving from one of the uncut areas, invisible to the naked eye. Help yourself. Do you see that? <laughs> a reflection. Yeah, must have been a reflection. Quite harmless now, to the best of my knowledge. Also in the strong box, these. X-rays. Mm, some five years after the events you're describing, when the Röntgen apparatus became widely available, oh. Gibbon took a series of X-rays of the interior of the egg. There's a structure here, seemingly embedded in the molecules of the crystal itself. A structure fully as complex as a human brain. <laughs> It was advanced, all right, the crystal egg. Careful, Rosa. Careful, my love. The rubbish you pick up. No wonder we haven't got two pennies to rub together. Time we got more commercial. 
You know, Rosa, I, I was think no, Let me say my piece, please. If we move to a little place in the country, <sighs> you know, like I, I've always wanted, we, we wouldn't have to pay this fearsome rent. It, it could all be so different. I could get myself a little teaching job. Just teaching children to draw and such like. And, and the country! Spare me that nonsense cave. Spare me Cave, the naturalist. Spare me growing our own blooming vegetables. As I live and breathe, we stay here. Now pass me the duster. Don't chain yourself to your desk, Wells. Get out a bit. Stairs cave, the shop's in darkness. And maybe, who knows, the biggest customer we've ever had is passing by. And what does he see? Well, what? I'm not sure. Closed, that's what he sees. And he continues on his way to spend his money somewhere blooming else. We don't get that many big customers on a damp Friday afternoon, Rosa. Or any other afternoon for that matter. And upstairs, here you are. In the dark with this blasted thing. Doing God knows what. What did I ever see in you? I don't know. You never in all these years told me, my love.
Mr. Cave, how can I help you? I, um, I just wanted a moment of your time. As a matter of fact, I'm going out for the evening. Oh. A moment, then. What on earth is this? I was hoping you could tell me. It's as accurate as I could make it. This is something you actually saw. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Well, there are species that live in deserts, but... I've never seen anything that looks like this. Where in heaven's name did you see it? It was big. Oh, I don't know how I know, you know, the scale and all. But it was the size of a man. The size of a man? Oh, sorry, Wells, I got out yeah. If we're going to get to the Alhambra before the show... Tell me, uh... About it, would you, Mr... Mr. Mr. Cave. Mr. Cave? A window to a different place altogether, another country. Uh, another world. Amazing. A sort of remote vision. And this window somehow is generated by your crystal egg. This is all a little fantastic. Fantastic? Now try this for fantastic. Speak down a 100-mile length of wire to someone halfway across the country. Then listen to that person speaking back to you, exchange notes about what the weather's like, how Auntie Dorothy's leg is doing. I'd call that no less fantastic. The telephone, it's the coming thing. I have heard of it. Besides, this is no mere speculation. This is a phenomenon we can see with our own eyes, eh, Mr. Kane? Sold. Sold for four guineas, and within two days, just like I said. I'm afraid there's a problem. What? A previous offer. The egg's no longer on the market. As usual, you're too late, Cave. This gentleman here has just bought the egg. I'm most terribly sorry, Reverend. It shouldn't have been in the window. What previous offer? Six guineas. Then who offered you that? Why? This gentleman here. He's just come to collect. Well, of course, I must defer to the previous purchaser. Your four guineas, sir. And your six guineas, if you please, sir. Are you serious? Please. This was our evening at the musical. Very intriguing piece. Good night. 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 A very intriguing piece. <sighs> A hag. So much for our evening out. Did you see that? What? What is it? I swear I saw something move inside the crystal. Move inside the crystal. A reflection. Look at it glittering. Look at it glittering. You could see anything in there. Six guineas. Wells. Hmm? How seriously do you really take Mr. Cave's story? Well, let's see what he says about it later. It's too much light. There's far too much light. It has to be a lot darker. <laughs> well, it won't work. See? Excuse me. Now. Yeah. to touch it with a glimmer. At just the right angle.
Wells. It's all right. It's dust. It's red dust. It's more than a window, the egg. You see? It's far more. It's a door into another world. Bright light is inert, the same it seems for total darkness. It's the precisely angled beam of light that triggers it. If I'd opened the doors a moment later, you would have both have joined that creature in his world. Whatever else it is, that thing is dangerous. Tomorrow we'll take the egg to Gibbon. Get it shut away where it can be studied in safety. A whole new branch of scientific study. A creature? What was it? What does it want? Can't begin to guess. Hold it. <laughs> I'm looking for a uh, Mr. Skinner. No Skinner here. You should get back to bed, gentlemen like you should, sir. You don't belong here. There's money for the man who'll find me, Skinner. How much? Here. Thank you both for believing in me. Your money back, Mr. Wills. Six guineas. You told me five guineas. Blooming great whoosh it was. Never seen anything like it. And your dog? Never saw Davy again. Just heard him bark one last time and he was gone. Came up here for a while to call for him, but no Davy. Mm. Amazing. Look, look, you can see where the meteorite came from. Like the wake of a boat. Good God. What is it? Mars. The red planet, of course. We saw it. We were... We were there an hour ago. We must turn the scientists loose on this. This could change so much our whole concept of physics. A gateway to the stars. Tomorrow we take it to... Your man, Gibbon. Yes, yes, uh, Imperial College, nine o'clock, all right? I've got a place where it'll be safe till then. Not even Rosa has the key. Yes, well, be careful. Don't worry. Mr. Cave, what about my guinea? All right, Skinner, you'll get your money. You remember, you made a promise. I told you, you'll get your money. What are you thinking? It's just occurred to me. If we can turn it on at will, perhaps they can. And you really believed it was a Martian? You saw it yourself. And where do you think that red dust came from? A doorway between planets? Why? Maybe just another form of transport. If they have buildings, they're surely not so very different from us. They could be ever so distant cousins. Hmm. Distant cousins. You really mean that, or are you just humouring me? Both. You know what else puzzles me? 
What? What happened to Davy the dog? <laughs> you always do that, don't you? Those trick questions of yours. We're here. Thank you for walking me home, Wells. Oh, yes. Tomorrow morning, then? Hmm. Well, this morning, in fact. <laughs> Davy the dog. Come here. Rosa, I am sorry. It seems I'm late. Okay. This red dust has indications of fusion. Silicates melted at fantastic temperatures. Those canals of Mars could have had lava flowing down them. Coming soon, is he? Your man cave? Wells? You look worried. What is it? Mr. Cave. He's in danger. A killing jar. Don't you see? Look! Look around you! Mr. Wells. Oh, Mr. Wells, I'm so sorry, the meeting. I'm afraid events have occurred this morning that have taken all things right out of my mind. Gabby! 
Good luck in the country, Mr. Cave. Thank you, Wells. Thank you, Jane, for everything. Goodbye, Mr. Cave. Completely inert and dead. All the energy gone from it. Such opportunities lost. Perhaps you can salvage something. Perhaps. And such dangers, too. How to warn the world that we humans are not alone in our galaxy. Who would believe us? Mm. Sometimes, don't you think people can be as much influenced by fiction as by fact? Uh -huh. Has anyone ever told you, Wells, about your rather excessive fondness for mysterious questions? <laughs> so macabre, Wells. Specimens. Um, the dog and Mrs. Cave. I wonder what the Martians in their Imperial College will make of them. <laughs> Let us hope they have some Martian equivalent of compassion. Wells, you talked about the call. Hmm. The melodious hum. The siren song. Like, uh, like a flower putting out nectar to attract bees. This was nectar to the minds of mammals. Your imagination. It's later than I thought. It seems such a short while. Did. Oh, There's really no need at all to warm me home, Wells. If that is, I haven't misread our situation. No. I mean... It's late. I've been thoughtless. Let's take some refreshment. Hmm? The book you read, The War of the Worlds. So that was your way of telling the world that there was intelligent life on other planets. Mm. And that it might not be too friendly. This way. I'm more than a little amazed. More than a little curious. What I can't get out of my mind is. What do you think really happened to Mrs. Cave? after all. Tell me, Wells, and this is off our main subject for my curiosity alone. I'll satisfy yours if you satisfy mine. When your name came up in connection with the strange bequest of Professor Gibbon, I made some inquiries about you. Routine, or so I thought, until an alarm bell here and there went off in the rather dark and winding corridors where you conduct your business. Quite. There's a file on you. 
old but still open, with one of the security services. I thought you were a member of one of those services. Not exactly. What was in the file? They wouldn't let me see. Departmental rivalry, jealousies. Mm. All right, Ellen. If you but knew with what little reason the world is ruled. I only learned the name on the file. HMS Fulmar. It's dark. I can't feel anything. Oh, there's a ship with a mast. Nothing to worry about, old chap. Let's just have one more look. To my death. What's happening? There's no sign of trauma or lesion of the eyes. He's obviously hallucinating. It may be an intracranial lesion or a subdural hematoma. Will he get better looks? I can't say. There's a good boy. We're going to take you somewhere more comfortable, all right? There, there. Can you see? Come. Uh, I really don't like this. I don't see what else we can do. The boat is going down. It's on the rocks. Oh, okay. What are you doing? Oh my God! A rock! Uh, help me! Restrain him. There's a rock. Stay calm. Help me! Restrain him. Restrain him. They're sinking. Calm, Davidson. Calm. Conceive of what went wrong. I don't know what to say. Power surge? Oh, something like that, but I, I checked. I had no idea that there was any danger. It's impossible. Tell Davidson that. Miss Robbins, if I had had any idea that there was any risk... Perhaps we should just go over. Hmm. I thank God it wasn't you who was beside the coil when it exploded. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a look around here and try and... Uh... Why did it have to be Davidson? Are you all right? Just a bit shaken. More nervous about tomorrow. Oh, don't be. I'm just thankful there is a tomorrow. What on earth possessed you to help Bellows in the first place? Misplaced compassion. You see, I knew he only had Davidson as his lab assistant. And if he'd seen Davidson assisting, you wouldn't want to leave anyone alone in a room that contained Davidson and a large amount of electricity. Not even Bellows? You're really down on him, aren't you? He nearly blew up the woman I love. Didn't even seem to have the faintest idea of what has happened. I'm hardly going to look on him like a long-lost brother. What do you think happened? I'm no physicist. I just did what he asked. When he made the connection, power started to build in the coil. Then there was a hum getting higher, turning into a howl. 
<clears throat> then, and, and this was strange, complete silence and a flash of the most intense white light. Where was uh, Davison in all this? Standing where he shouldn't be standing. Right in the middle of the flash, the explosion, whatever it was. That's Davidson all over. <sighs> what have we done to that poor clumsy boy? It would just have to be him. Doesn't seem quite cut out for the life of a lab assistant. He isn't, but what he is, Wells, is a nephew of Frederick Masterman. The Dean of Imperial College. He is a first-rate lab assistant, as I've always maintained. Masterman will be out for blood when he hears about this. But you're not the one to blame. I shouldn't really have been assisting Bellows in the first place. Until tomorrow, then. Until tomorrow. A storm at sea. Now, what kind of hallucination is that? Mr. Davidson, how are we feeling? You have to listen to me. We're listening. I'm on an island by the sea, do you understand? Of course. Why can't I see you? Are you a ghost? Oh, no. I'm real enough. It's time for your sedative, my lad. Make you nice and sleepy. I don't want to sleep. Oh! <laughs> I need help! You see, what we were trying to do was send a powerful, low-frequency radio signal right around the world, bouncing it off the stratosphere. You see, like a ball. Boom, boom, boom. Wasn't there a similar American experiment by, uh, what's his name, Tesla? No, yeah, it's uh, building on his work. What went wrong? I've been thinking about it. It's a sort of resonance effect. When two or more identical frequencies meet, they have a far more powerful effect than when they're simply added together. As when soldiers marching across a wooden bridge they have to break step well, the synchronized vibrations they produce would literally shake the bridge apart. The explosion? Yes, but that would mean another coil. Uh, identical, transmitting simultaneously. And that can't be possible. Fascinating. Yes, well, it could mean my job. Well, all experiments carry an element of risk. College must have known that when they authorised the experiment. Ah. Yes, well, they couldn't see what it would mean. Near instantaneous transmission of information, global communication. And they were talking about the electricity bill. I couldn't wait. Jane could have waited. Davidson could have waited. I'm so sorry. Morning, Whitaker. No Professor Gibbon? Uh, recuperating from an attack of influenza, Mr. Wells. Unlike him to be ill? Ah. He administered the flu bug himself by way of an experiment. Now, that is more like him. Um, Mr. Bellow's experiment, I was wondering if you could help me with a couple of questions, Whitaker. A pleasure. Speak to him. Everything is in hand, Mr. Davidson.
Can I help you, sir? Yes. You know what this is? Part of a Faraday call. I believe it's of your manufacture. That's possible. We make a great many. Mr. Perkins? Just a minute, sir. My colleague, uh, Dr. Bellows from Imperial College, tells me you made this one for him. Governor? I wouldn't know, sir. Yeah, we made that one. It's part of a Faraday coil. There's only two of those made exactly the same. I wound them myself. 1,960 turns of eighth-inch copper. Beautiful. Now, there's that one and the one that we made for Sam. the... Sam. I said I'd be with you in a minute. Return to your position. Right, yeah, Mr. Perkins. So, if that's everything, sir. Yes. Yes. Good day. Best, please, darling. I'll get that for you. Same for me, please. 1,960 coils, I can hardly believe it. Must use a machine, I suppose. Yeah, by hand, if you don't mind. Really? And two of them, that must have been hard work. Who on earth was the second one for? Special job, that was, and why would you be asking, sir? Oh, I'm a writer. Fantastic tales. The writer's always full of questions. I thought you said you was with Imperial College. Thank you. You're too quick for me, Sam. I'm not really at the college at all. I'm just trying to help out a friend who's in trouble. And what sort of tales do you tell, then? Well, I've had some stories in Strand magazine, not very many. I'm on it. Blooming heck! I read one of yours a while back with that, um... Sherlock Holmes in, wasn't it? Why didn't you tell me who you was before? Cheers! <laughs> Perkins said that, how dare he? What he said? I don't believe it, thank you. I bet he couldn't uh, twist 900, 100, no, no. 800, <laughs> 8,000. No, 1,000. No, don't forget 900. the 90. Was well, that, ah, that the second coil? I right, both the same. Peas in a pod. A funny old job, that one, and a funny bunch of fellas. All stuck up in their uniforms. Oh, yes, what kind of uniform is that? The Navy. Hush, hush, he said. And finally, he just clammed up like a... A clam, maybe? Yes, thank you. Like an inebriated clam. Davidson said he saw a ship. He did. Perhaps we should take what Davidson says more seriously. Yes. I was going to see him, as a matter of fact. I still feel so awful about what happened. And frankly, there's very little we can do for him except observe. And what have you observed, Dr. Simmons? The most vivid display of entoptic phenomena. Imaginary visions, like the stars you see after being banged on the head, yet more intense. A very rare condition. It'll make the most wonderful paper for the Royal College. Every cloud has a silver lining, then. We're doing our best for Davidson, of course. Making him comfortable. Keeping him safe. And the prognosis? I wouldn't even hazard a guess. We're in uncharted waters. Thank you. Careful there, Mr. Davidson. Wait! I found something. Oh, good day, sir. Is it my uncle? No, it's me, Miss Robbins. Oh, Miss Robbins. You'll listen to me, won't you? Of course I will. I found a footprint. A footprint, Mr. Davidson? Yes. Clear as day, in the sand. 
It means I'm not the only survivor here. Clothing. I can't pick it up. What sort of clothing? Navy. A naval uniform. Oh, God. What's happening to me? Fascinating. The creation of an imaginary world. Psychosis brought about by great stress. Or fear. A world into which the patient can escape. No. No. I'm not imagining anything. I'm here. It's as real as you are. Oh, I'm a madman. And I hate it. Oh, God. Somebody get me out of here. Please. You're not going mad, Davidson. And I will get you out of here, I promise. You made good time, then? Yes. This way. All right. We'll go. Thank you, Mom. You're going to make a go of it, are you? Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Come on, son. I know with no ring on her finger. Eh? The devil will get him. Preoccupied. Thank you. Something's bothering me. About us? Oh, Wells, you're such an idiot. This is the happiest day of my life. No. It's Davidson. He describes the island in, in such detail. You know what he said he saw? A naval uniform. Imagination? Poor Davison hasn't got one. I can't help it, Wells. I believe him. Mr. Wells? What a marvellous building you have here. Yes, we're very proud of it. What can I do for you? I'm here in search of information about a naval vessel. Her name? I don't know. Her destination? I don't know that either, nor her port of departure, but I believe she may have sunk two days ago off the coast of an island. I'm sorry, Mr. Wells. I have no idea what you're talking about. I have reason to believe she may have been carrying a radio antenna. There is no such vessel. Will you wait here a minute, sir? Captain Hapgood will see you now, sir. Will you explain yourself, sir? My card. A writer. 
The lieutenant tells me you're spouting some wild story about a missing naval vessel. Is it a wild story, sir? Of course. Royal Navy knows what's happening to its own ships. That's very reassuring. Who did you hear this from, anyway? My source is somewhat unconventional, a witness who saw what happened. You're not a... a spirit, are you, Mr. Wells? <laughs> no, no, no. My disposition is a scientific one. Good. Otherwise, I might have had you thrown overboard. Anyway, it's impossible. No one can witness a non-existent event. You're wasting my time and your own, Mr. Wells. I came because I believe there may be survivors. I don't know what you are, a, a crank or a fraud, sir. But your story is nonsense. Spreading false rumours is a bad business, Mr. Wells. It's dangerous. Do I make myself clear? At least we now know Davidson is telling the truth. Why? Because the Navy is so obviously lying. That's true, is it? Down a little... There. Now we need solid evidence. Like what? A wreck. Welcome home, sir. Did you enjoy a pleasant trip? I did not. I might remind you, my itinerary took me to France. Commiseration, sir. I'm famished. Is dinner ready? It is, sir. We'll eat right now. Good. Get my nephew to the table. I regret Mr. Sidney is not here. Why not? Where the hell is the young fool? Well, I, 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 Speak up, man. Ah, back again so soon, Miss Robbins. There's no change, I'm afraid. Mr. Wells here. Hope to speak to him. A colleague of Mr. Davison. I'm a writer. Not a journalist. <laughs> a science writer. I was hoping to see this unfortunate young man myself, and then perhaps record your insights and impressions of the case, Dr. Simmons. Give the public a first-hand view of how someone at the peak of their psychiatric career, if I may use the phrase, <laughs> handles the more bizarre phenomena of the human mind. I dare say I might be able to throw some light on things. My nephew, Sidney Davidson. Your name is. My Anne. name is Sir Frederick Masterman. Be quick about it. Davidson's day today. Another visitor in the foyer. I shall escort him upstairs personally. You must have heard of him. Sir Frederick Masterman of Imperial College. I'll make a point of introducing you. That's all I need. What are we going to do, Wells? Frederick, a great pleasure. Speak for yourself, sir, and answer me this. Are you the person responsible for locking up my nephew? 
Rest assured that Sydney is in comfortable and secure surroundings. And what is that in plain English? He's in protective care. Protective poppycock! Take me to him at once. I'd appreciate seeing Sydney without further delay. The boy may be an idiot, but by God, he's my idiot. His condition is really rather more serious than you might imagine. I shall form my own judgment. Very well, Sir Frederick. My keys, they've gone. In heaven's name, man, you're in charge of this place. Stop fooling and footling around. Shall I try? No. It's just a suggestion. and counting from the left. There's a small book pool just before you get to the door. Sydney? Yes? Sydney, is that you? Yes. In here. Straight jacket. Rubber hose. What new science is this, Simmons? Mm -hmm. How are you keeping, Sydney? Oh, Miss Robbins, it's good to hear your voice again. It's dark in here. I like it when it's dark. It's less confusing. I can see the moon, you know. Oh, Sydney, can you? Come. We're here to help. Where? Masterman. The gate. Most interesting case, then. Rubbish! I just passed, Sir Frederick. Uh, the patient. Baldadash! Responding. Piffle, man! Piffle! A particularly revolutionary form of endosomatic irrigation. What the? Frederick? Unlock this door! Unlock this door! Fetch the master key, if you please. Yes, now what? Is there another way out of this room? Oh, yes, don't worry about that. Which door? Where? Um, it's by the withered tree. I haven't seen it, of course, but I felt it. For God's sake, show me, man. Oh, we'll have to wait. There's a cloud covering the moon. Thank you, Wilson. So, Frederick. <laughs> Try over there. What now? Is there no peace to be had? Oh, why are you looking at me like that, sir? We don't all wear straw in our hair, you know. <laughs> you hope we gone! <laughs> totally, sorry. <laughs> don't forget to lock the door! Surroundings hardly comfortable, secure. Two people have just made off with my nephew. Come on, man, get on with it. Right. Well, 
Barton of Sydney. We've all been in a Twitter about oh, you. Hodges, it's good to hear your voice again. We need this land out. Hodges, sir. Hodges, please trust this man and do what he asks. He's here to help me. If you're for him, then I'm for you. I'm afraid my uncle won't be very pleased. Well, we'll deal with Mount Vesuvius in due course as we have in many a year. I'll stay here to hold him back. Carry on, Jones. Get on. Ah, Sir Frederick. Out of my way, Hodges. Of all, uh, just what sort of an establishment do you think you're running here? A madhouse? Gates! What's happening to me, Mr. Wells? We're going to try and find the wreck you saw. Something extraordinary has happened to you. Your vision has been transported. Your body's in England, but your sight is on the island. That's what the power surge did to you, Sydney. Altered the electrical impulses in your optical cortex. Well, I, I don't understand. Don't worry, Sydney. Everything's going to be all right. But we have to find that wreck. We're going too fast. I... Are we going nearer or further away from where you think you saw the wreck? I don't know. Oh, God! What? We're going over the sea. Right over the sea. We're not really, are we? Which direction back to the shore? Right. Jones, turn right as soon as you can. Damn it. Quick as you can, don't let that cab catch us. Right, sir. Come on, come on. Oh, my God. What? Well, I, I, I can see smoke. Where? There. They're right. They're right. That's Imperial College. Yes, of course it is. That's where he first saw the wreck. I can see something. Take us back. There it is. HMS Fulmar. Oh my God. There's a man. He's alive. He's alive. Excuse me, gentlemen. Can you read it? I'm trying. It says, My darling Poppy, I thank a merciful providence that I might at least make this communication. If nothing else, I want you to know that my last thoughts are of you, and all my love is with you. Yours ever, Bunny. What the hell is going on? What have you done to my nephew? I have strict instructions, sir. From Captain Habgood. Young man, I can vouch for the importance of Mr. Wells's testimony. What is this infernal noise? Me, sir. You here again? Sir, your ship is the HMS Fulmar, and I can tell you one of her crew is alive. I won't listen to you, Mr. Wells. Then you must listen to me, sir. And who might you be? Sir Frederick Masterman, Dean of Imperial College of Science and Technology, London. Mr. Wells has quite a story for you. All we know about him is that his name is Bunny. My God. What? He signed his letter Bunny. It was to a girl... Well, I assume it was to a girl named Poppy. Atkins. By God, it's Atkins. How do you know? First Lieutenant Atkins, sir, of the Fulmer. He's engaged to my cousin. He calls her Poppy. And she calls him Bunny. How very embarrassing. How in blazes could you know that? Perhaps a reversal of optical polarity in the visual cortex of the young man who received a supercharged transmission. science is complicated. But the truth is not. Sir, if there's a chance that Atkins is alive... What I'm about to tell you is a naval secret and must not leave this room. HMS Fulmar was conducting experiments in electrical transmission. Sending radio messages around the world. 
We have lost contact with her. We can't say exactly where she is. But we can help you by tracing the path of the initial signal from Imperial College and coordinating the intersection. There are people here who deal with such things. We shall act upon your information. But by God, sir, it had better be right. Are you sure this is going to work, Professor? Oh, yes, Dean, when we apply the power, the signals affected, the polarity of the optical locus should be reversed. Are you positive we should proceed, Sidney? Yes, Uncle. Nothing could be worse than this. Good boy. Good boy. Ready, Professor? Get on with it. And get it right this time. Real vision at a distance. Do you remember Masterman? To my dying day. And what he said? Davidson, stepping between the poles of the two electromagnets, though one was on the other side of the world, yes. somehow had an extraordinary twist given to his retinal elements. She's a remarkable woman, your Jane. Take good care of the world. <laughs> you are. I will. The thing is, it may be possible to be visually in one part of the world and bodily in another. I'm bodily in this immediate vicinity, in case you haven't noticed. Not on the other side of the world. Oh, yes. So you are. So something good happened at the end of all this world. Very much so. Damn good show you put up out there, Atkins. Oh, I wasn't half the man you were. In your nightmare. Thank you a million times for coming through for me. Thank you. So that's why the Navy had a file on you. Hapgood must have been furious. Ellen, I have satisfied your curiosity. <clears throat> On this and many other points, I should like you now to satisfy mine. This place, a mysterious and secret gentleman's club in a disused warehouse with no address. What else is here? <laughs> Excellent food, by the way. How does your chef get round rationing? 
Now that is a classified secret. Oh. I only met my boss, Wells. I think you know each other. It is a pleasure to see you, Mr. Wells. By all the saints. <laughs> and this place? It established at the beginning of the war to accommodate the professor and his researches. A laboratory constructed in utter secrecy and unrestricted in the scope of its research. It was here, for example, that radar was finally perfected. Gibbon answered only to the Prime Minister. And on Gibbon's death? Well, I took over. The Professor insisted. And the work continues? There's a new and dangerous world to ready ourselves for. The atom bomb, bacteriological warfare, control of the mind. War and power. What a world. And diseases to be cured, new power sources to be developed, and the most bizarre physical effects to be explored. Test tube in the professor's strong box. A, a smear of liquid at its base. Oh, come and see for yourself. Here, give this to Charlie. Now, up here, Wells. The effect will wear off, exponentially, of course. Well, how in heaven's name do you know that? 